This is a complete beginner's guide to Padlet, but what's more important is I'm gonna show you how to use the free tool. And a lot of Padlet users don't realize that there are some tricks that you can use to allow you to actually use Padlet for free if you want to. Now I have a lot of experience using Padlet because I was actually a consultant for Padlet when it was called Woolwisher many years ago. And so I followed the technology and I know it pretty well. I'm gonna show you the key basics, but I'm also gonna show you some really interesting settings like how to add comments to Padlet so students can comment on each other's work and also how to moderate and also how to share Padlets. Really hope you like the video and as always, if you do, please like it, please share it, please comment on it. Let's get started. So you will need to create an account, so you will need to sign up. And I'm also gonna sign up and create an account for myself as well because what I want you to do is to see the free account and to see what options you've got when working in the free account. My, my normal account isn't free. Uh, it's a special one that Padlet gave me. And so we're gonna work with the free account so you can see exactly what it's like if you sign up and use it for free. So once you've signed up, you're probably gonna be wanting this option here. I'm a teacher, we're gonna click on that. And of course, we're gonna click on this one, free forever. You can use up to three Padlets, one user, 20 megabytes of upload. So that's the choice that we're going for. And we're gonna click on let's go and we're gonna start straight away to create Padlets. A Padlet is like an electronic corkboard where you can share ideas. Now students can ship, put up videos, they can record their webcam, they can record audio, they can write, and there's lots of different formats. It's the formats that have changed a lot over the years. If we click over here on the gallery, we can actually see all sorts of formats. And if we click, for example, on David Bowie's Greatest Hits, you'll see it's a whole collection of videos, but we've got loads and loads of other ways of using Padlet. So for example, students could create timelines and those timelines could be different things in their life or it could be the timeline of a holiday or the timeline of the history of someone or anything. And again, it doesn't have to be video or YouTube videos. It could be videos that the students record or audio or just writing or pictures. You really can share lots of things in a Padlet. So let's create a Padlet, and to do that we just click here, make a Padlet. And I know that you're only restricted to free Padlets in the free version, but I'm gonna show you some tricks that will allow you to use many more than free Padlets. Now when you come here, click on this button, and the best thing to do is to give it a title straight away. Now I'm gonna focus on a wall, but you've got various other versions of your kind of electronic cork board. It can be a grid, a canvas, a map, etc. I use the wall the most. You can easily change it at any point and you'll see. So I'm just gonna put in here, for example, introduce yourself. So I often use Padlets, for example, at the beginning to get students to introduce themselves to the rest of the group. That's a very common thing that I do with them. So I'm just gonna click on that button, nothing else at all, and I just click on done. Now actually, in theory, students could now start adding to that Padlet, and it would be as easy as them, you sharing the link with the students, and then them clicking on this button here, and then they can literally write their name, and then they can do all sorts of things. They can write here, or they could record audio, etc., etc. And we'll be coming back to that in a minute. But what I do wanna show you first is just a few options that might be useful when you actually first create your Padlet. So a really useful button to remember is this one here, because if you click here, you've got some settings. Now, one thing that you can do is obviously write a title, but also write some instructions, and I'm just gonna quickly do that. So I've written in my instructions, can you introduce yourself to the group and talk about your teaching career? For this example, can you use audio? Okay, so students know exactly what they've got to do. Most of these things I wouldn't change. Notice that if ever you want to change the layout, you can do it from here if you do want to use a different layout. And I will go through some of these later because some of them are super, super useful. But if you're happy with everything, click here. Now, once you're ready and you want to share your Padlet and get them students to contribute to it, all you need to do is to click on the share button and you wanna click on links basically or share it. This will do fine, okay? And just copy link to clipboard. That is, you've now copied that link and if you shared that link with your students, they will be able to come onto the Padlet and make their contribution. So let's now look at that from the student's point of view. 
So let's imagine that I'm a student, so I'm gonna actually click on that link. It's gonna bring me to this page, and what I would need to do is to click here, and then I would choose, click here, and the one that I'm gonna choose in this particular case, remember I asked for audio recording, so I click here, and it's very easy to do a recording, just click on this button and start recording. Hi, just a little bit about my teaching career. I first started in 1987 as an English teacher in Greece and then Spain. And then after about 13 years of teaching, I came back to the UK, blah, blah, blah. Stop. If I'm happy, I can discard it. I can play back, save and play back. So I can click here and then I can just, if I'm happy, I can play it. So if I wanted to now, what I could do is just write my name in here. Okay, click on save and just wait a while. Make sure that the students realize they do need to wait until everything is ready. And that's when you know everything's ready, when you see this image, because that shows you the audio. And then you would click on publish. Now notice also that you can sort of write a subject. So Russell says hello. And now if I click on this publish button, that will be added on to the Padlet. And of course, other students could contribute as well. Now, let's just go back then to get back to the home page as the teacher. We would click on this button here. Obviously, here I'm logged in as a student. So let's go back onto the teacher page. So I'm back now logged in as the teacher. I can see that the first recording's up, and of course, there could be many more. I can listen to the recording, of course, by just clicking here. Hi, just a little bit about my teaching career. I first started absolutely brilliant. And that way, of course, what I can also do if I want to. If I just click back here is that I could leave a comment. Now at the moment, the comments aren't turned on. So nobody can leave a comment on anybody else's audio. But if I wanted to allow students to listen to each other's and then leave comments, the only button I would need to click is to come back on to the settings. And it's a really nice one. And one that I often use is that I turn on comments. And now suddenly you'll notice that I'm allowed to comment. Yeah, so I'm gonna write, nice to meet you, Russell. So what I often do is get the students to do the recordings first with the comments turned off. And then, then I say to them, right, now all the recordings are up. I'm gonna turn the comments on, go back, listen to three other students and leave some comments. So you can really make that into a kind of two-stage activity that makes sure that the, the actual audios get listened to. Now, if we click back onto the homepage, I just wanna point out something really important. Just a super quick break from the video. If you like what you're seeing and you want more videos, then please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. There's loads of free content on the opening page. You can scroll down and see all sorts of videos. I specialize in the use of videos in education, uh, particularly in language education. If you really want to follow my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. That way you get updated on all the latest blog posts, the webinars that I run that are often for free, the courses that we organize, as well as, of course, the new videos. And at this moment, if you sign up to the newsletter, there is a 14 part video course, which is basically a selection of the most popular videos on YouTube, where I show you different technologies and 90% of what I cover in those videos are free technologies that you can use in your teaching and learning. Really hope that was useful. Let's get back to the video. So when you're a teacher, and obviously you wanna get back to your homepage, just click here, Padlet. Now let's imagine that we've got now, as we can see, just one Padlet that the students have produced. Maybe we've now reached the maximum of three Padlets, for example and we can't make any more Padlets, what we can do? Well, even in a free account, you are allowed to archive a certain amount. And archive means that they therefore become, you've still got them, but they're not active. So let's say we finish with this activity, we've done the activity, we're all happy with it. What we can do is click here and we can archive that Padlet. Now suddenly we've now got three Padlets again. Now it's very interesting, if you come down to archives, you'll see that you can archive, and I think I'm right in saying you can archive up to a maximum, it might be five or eight. I think it's eight. So that means you can have three Padlets live at any time, but also up to eight archived. Now, eventually, you will need to delete them, okay? And then, of course, if you delete a Padlet, then you can then make another one. So another alternative, of course, is to delete your Padlet. So this one here is in the archives, and if I click here, I can unarchive that Padlet, okay? And put it back now into the main account. So 
archived padlet, padlets can be returned to to live padlets when an archive when a padlet is archived it's not live though you've still got it in your account but of course if you want to delete this padlet you would click here and click on move to trash now one thing when you move something to trash go to your trash can and then completely remove it now that one is completely removed and you can start again with three padlets so this is only an introductory course. I'm going through all the basics and the important things, but I'm gonna click on make a padlet again, and I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. I'm just gonna click here, and this time we'll do a different one. We'll go for, let's go for stream. That's where one padlet goes underneath the next one, okay? So I'm gonna click on this one here, and again, what I would normally do is in fact you can just click on done and then go to the settings and what you do is one that will write in a title and a description that's really important and remember a very useful button is and sometimes as i said i would do it in two stages first of all get the students to make the padlets then turn the comments on and then allow them back but you may want to turn the comments on straight from the beginning and another useful button if you're working with very young learners is this one it's called moderation manual now i want to show you this because for working with young learners this can be really really useful so let me show you what happens if i close this button now and i click on the share button and i decide to share this with other students so i'm going to clip to the clipboard i'm going to log in now as a student so i'm just going to paste that link in again this is exactly what a student would do this is the new one i'm going to click here this time what we do is we're going to click here and we're going to use our webcam so we're going to choose camera in fact we want video recorders the one we want because camera's just for a picture we want to use video recorder so i'm going to click on that and hopefully it should put my recorder on and it has there i am and i can now click and start recording Hi, blah, 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 blah. Done my recording, click on stop, save and play back. Again, opens up. Let's just quickly check it's working. You can start recording. Hi, blah, blah. All right, let's put a quick title in. Russell saying hello, okay? And click on save. And then remember, you've got to wait until this is all processed. So give it time, because it will become really clear in a minute when it is processed. There it is and i'm going to click on submit now that actually though it looks as if it's on the screen notice it says awaiting approval in other words though you can see this recording no other student would be able to see it until the teacher approves so if you go back now to the teacher account notice what the teacher sees the teacher sees that i've done a recording but I can reject it. I could listen to that recording if I wanted to, and if I wasn't happy with it, or what's been written, or whatever picture's showing. So obviously I can click and listen, check it's okay, and if I have, I can approve it, or if I don't like it, I can reject it. And that is a real strong element of Padlet if you're working with younger learners, or perhaps with a group that you're not familiar with because there's lots of people on, maybe it's some type of MOOC or open course, and you want to moderate and control the content. Now, there are a number of other interesting settings. I will point out one more on this introductory course, and that is that you can allow students to react. So you can give them the option to like, the their favorite post or vote on it or add a star to it or even grade it which can be really useful if you're doing some kind of peer evaluation of students work remember perhaps one of the most interesting things about working with padlet is the number of options you've got in terms of and if we just come back to the settings the different formats and one thing to really learn about is the different types of padlets that we can create and what that means in terms of the types of activities that you can do for example the timeline is really great for history for telling stories for telling biographies that kind of thing works really really well the map is wonderful of course if you're talking about a holiday and you want to map where you've been etc i'm a big fan of this technology we've only touched on what it does but it really is one that i like and it is very very easy to use 
Okay, really hope that video was useful. Really like that tool Padlet. And if you come over to teachertrainingvideos.com, loads more free content, as I've mentioned before. Look at the menu system there at the top, loads of different sections. Don't forget, as I mentioned, there's no tricks. If you sign up to the newsletter, you get all the updates and the latest videos, but you also get that free 14 part course, which is basically a selection of the most popular free technologies that I've highlighted on YouTube. If you want to contact me as well, it is possible to contact me from the website. If you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see that you're able to contact me here if you want me perhaps to do some training with your organization or even with you as an individual. And I'm going to leave some more videos on the screen now that you might find useful around the topic of Padlet.